Hello again. Welcome back to Gallery 3, Part 2. There's so much more to see. So much more to see. Question or comment? Leave it down, down below. Hope you enjoy this just as much as the rest. Thank you. I've got to start this Part 2 with, um, with this stone here and this short little section called Dragons because I just completely forgot about it, okay? And so I had to redo this and it's it's a short set. It could have gone with the with the previous video just fine and I forgot about it. So now we're going I've got to make up for it. So that's how we're starting off part 2 with one of my boo-boos. And this is a stone that was owned, I believe, by uh, Dr. White. And it's a, it's a big stone. It's about 10 11 inches across this way. But it's about three, three and a half inches thick. It's real thick. And it's going in dragons uh, because of this guy here. Now, he looks like a dragon. I'm going to blow it up. But he's also on the edge of water. And you see these fish here? So, is it a water dragon? I don't know. I don't know how many dragons actually live in the sea. Or could it be a sea dragon? I don't think it's going to be a fire-breathing dragon because it's too close to the water. Okay, you see him here. He's kind of got either his mouth open to swallow the boat or he's blowing it off over the edge. And you see some kind of wind god here blowing wind out this way. And then you see this kind of upside down face here of a sun or a moon or whatever. But this is, a, and you see some indexing up here. There's some more ships behind here. But it's Kurt. It's a pretty good caricature of this guy here. And now let's look at the reverse of the stone. And you'll see the script. And you see some indexing up here. I'll blow it up big for you. And here's going to be a cartouche. And if you look real close here, there appears to be some kind of dragon or snake down there. I'm going to call it a snake. And you see the uh, ever-present Helios. And I've just got one more tablet to show you in this section. And this is this guy here. This is my photo of him. I can't remember when or, when or where. But you can see from his neck here, he's tied up in a slip knot. And that concludes this short little section. I'm calling this section Faces and Heads because there's a lot of stuff in here that's not really portraits. And this is our first piece here. I'll call it Big Nose. He appears to be carved out of local or Illinois sandstone. And this, this head here is, uh, could be a semi-statue because it does stand up. But he's about 8 inches high. Maybe a little less. Here's another one. That, as you can see, is about eight inches wide, probably about 14 inches tall. Statue, but it is a face, and it is a head. Almost looks like he's got a mustache here. You can see his nose, but I wonder if that's a mustache or <laughs> got me. Here's another small one. Clearly Egyptian. I think I've used him in my Egyptian. Got the Ankh here, staff there. Here's our next one. Looks a little goofy. And this stone's not very big, probably about three inches high. On the reverse of it, you see Helios. Here's another pretty tall statue. He's about 18 inches tall and appears to be a hardened sandstone. Could be local. I mean, sandstone is found all over the world and it's hard to put an ID, but I'm just saying that the, the, the sandstone in this area is this color. And there's four different grades of sandstone in this area. Next, we have this statue here. And this is probably about 14 inches tall. I'm going to blow up the face a little bit here so you can see it. 
and it appears again to be sandstone from somewhere around, you know, I mean, like I say, sandstone is found in many places, and our area here has several different styles of uh, hardnesses of, stand, of sandstone. And a lot of sandstone looks just like this, but this could be local sandstone. Here's the reverse of it. I'll blow it up and let you look at it a little bit closer. Our next one is probably about a foot tall. He's a statue. He stands up. And you'll notice he has the smirk in the face here. I'm going to blow it up and let you look at it here. There's a lot of tablets here. And, and in other places we've seen uh, from other collections in Italy and Spain where the mouth is kind of crooked. Uh, kind of crooked. Kind of, you know, kind of uh, just weird looking. I don't know what the, what the name of that would be. Crooked mouth. And here's the reverse of it. But you can still see caricature in his face. Here's another small stone, probably about two and a half, three inches. Small stone also. Here's another piece of marble. Well executed piece, but he is not pretty. He's not a pretty person. Same stone. Here's another picture I took way back in the mid 90s or early 90s. I kind of like this guy. Uh, several of these date back to the um, uh, pictures uh, of galleries, uh, date back to the uh, mid and late uh, 1980s. He's one of them. And I love it when uh, somebody says, oh, well, the, the, character, uh, the caricatures are too comical to be real. Well, how about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comical characters? <laughs> This guy's got some script in his mouth. Here's another really handsome statue. That's like an orangish type of, uh, of sandstone. He's pretty tall too. He's about 18 inches. And here's one of my favorites. I featured him in, um, in, in another video here recently. And this is the right side of him. And I had to get back with the, uh, with the present owner of this, uh, of this stone and send it in uh, to forensics. Because you're going to see why. He, he weighs 45 pounds. And I just got tired of lugging it around all over the country. So I gave it to my boss at the time. So here, here's an artifact. And I think I paid, I think I paid maybe $6 for it. <laughs> it 
and it's a beautiful, beautiful piece because of this right here. So much calcification and erosion on this side, and it's over the uh, the, the the engraving, the the carving. So that happened. All of this age and patina and calcification happened after it was done, and of course it flew through forensics. Old. Oh, well, how are you going to fake that, Harry? Well, you got me. Take a chemist, I guess. Maybe could do it, but you're not going to fool the forensic lab. You're not going to do it. Nobody in this lifetime. This one had some orange paint put on it, or something kind of rubbed into it to bring it out, but it really didn't need to. Clearly Egyptian but it has been tainted. This is another pretty large guy. It's about like a foot tall. Here's the front of him. And this type tablet here was owned by a local person purchased at, the, at an auction. And you can't really see it, but it's a head. Here's his eye, his ear. Come down here. And that stone there is about like two feet. It's huge. Two feet tall, maybe 14, 16 inches across. Big. Weighed about, oh, I'd say at least 25, 30 pounds. This is the other side of it. Yum. Crunch. Listen at that crunch. Yum. Okay. Okay, this is an experiment. There's the fancy feast. And there's crunch. Yum, yum, yum. Put the paw down. Here's another lady, nice looking, Caucasian girl, looks like. Appears to be a warrior of some description. You see two feathers coming down here, so he could be a, an Algonquin or an Iroquoian. Got an earring. But to me, he looks Amerindian. And this looks like some kind of priest. It's a real small tablet. I call this one monkey head. Hey, we're in faces and heads, remember. Is that bizarre or what? Here's Mystery Man. Really nice carving. This guy has been through forensics. We don't know who he is. And there are no other artifacts that I have seen in this collection with this same guy on them. A lot of times you'll see a, the, the same guy with the same name written the same way, and you can tell it's the same person. But we have not seen this fella here on any other artifact. He lives now here in uh, Illinois. Here is what appears to be another Native American to some degree. He's got some kind of fancy headdress here with three plumes coming down. And here's the rear of it here. Next. Here's another guy that's been bounced around from collection to collection for decades. Nice looking piece. And here's what we call the cone head. And on the reverse of this is a whale, which I featured in Aquatic Animals. Another handsome warrior.
This is clearly an Egyptian priest. You can see him holding the staff and the ankh. Here's another lady. And we'll probably see some other pictures of her from other photographers. My picture here is not real clear. Somebody cared enough 2,000 years ago to carve her image in stone. Another tablet, clearly Egyptian. And this tablet's a little bit larger than your hand. It's not as small as many of the others. There's another handsome Caucasian looking man, warrior. He's been in several collections, several galleries. So has this fella. This guy's featured in uh, Afrocentric. And this is a beautiful dame, well executed. She's a very pretty girl, quite handsome. And we don't know who she is. Her name is not on the reverse of it. And this is the only stone that we have her picture. He's got a nice mammary gland. Probably looks about, what, 18, 19 or so? Could that be Cleopatra? Cleoptra? That's how her name is spelled in these, in these stones, Cleoptra, with a K. It's not Cleopatra, it's Cleoptra, the original. Why would, how would somebody know that, carving these stones, to put Cleoptra instead of Cleopatra? And if this lady walked into the room, you would recognize her. Hey, you're the girl on the stone. Yep. This is Quintus Mateus, besieger of towns, wreaked havoc in Spain, which was back then called Iberia. And this was a, this was deciphered, I think, in um, oh gosh, one of the other videos from 25 years ago, 1995 or so, 96. And this is the reverse of the stone. Quintus Matthias, besieger of cities. Here's another statue. Appears to be carved in native sandstone. I'm just going to cruise through some of these. Same stone from the front. It's a face. This is a real small. This is like less, uh, smaller than a quarter. Real small. Another pendant, small pendant, probably the size of a 50 cent piece. I don't know how to describe this guy. But here you can see him. Here's another one showing the smirk, the, the, the frown, the, the, the twisted mouth kind of looking thing. Somebody say Egyptian? Here's another real small piece. There are probably about a dozen of these 3D type pieces. And uh, they all disassembled. They've all been broken away here, I guess, to get them out and move them. It's just they were just so fragile. That it's a lot easier to snap the heads off to move them, I suppose. Uh, what their purpose is, I don't know. I haven't seen them in any other uh, um, artifact collections other than from this tomb here. There might be something from Egypt or Greece, Italy, wherever, uh, that has this type of style. But we'll probably see some more of them. But I have seen probably about 12 
of this style with the platform and the head coming up in the rear. It's probably about six inches. This is probably about four inches high. You can see here it's badly damaged. Appears to be another Caucasian warrior. And here you can see how Jack Ward had rubbed um, car wax into the inscription to bring out the, uh, the image. A lot of them are like that. And when you see the white there, that's, that's, that's car wax in there. I, I would assume car wax or some other kind of wax. Just to bring out the carving where you can see it better, which I don't mind. Forensics won't look at it. Forensics says no way to, to tell what it is or whatever. And and because it's 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 tainted, but it's still a good it's still a good show. And all of these guys go way back to uh, photo galleries taken in the 1980s, which we'll see. And this is the rear of that stone. And this warrior's got a real nice design. You can't hardly see it right here on the side of his helmet. great facial features. This is a fantastic carving here. He's been around for a long time. He's been through to, in several different collections through the decades. Here's his name. I'll blow him up a little bit bigger. Handsome fellow. The picture is clear, but the carving's not that great. Here's another fella that has been around. He's got the bird helmet. Can't hardly see his name here. Here's another warrior. And I believe this stone was deciphered years ago. I can't remember what it said. I can't remember who that is. And this is an incredible stone here. I'm going to try to blow this real hard to get pictures of this one here. Uh, 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 the lighting was just terrible. Uh, the, the scratches were, the, the lines in it are, are cut so finely. I mean, the, the, this is so well executed. And he's facing left. Uh, most of these stones face right. There's only a few that face left. I'm going to blow him up here, see if we can see him a little bit better, but we've got other pictures of him coming up. There's his face a little bit clearer. And this fella has thousands of lines that are all perfectly grooved, perfectly placed and not a single mistake anywhere. Not a single boo-boo. Look at the caricature in that face. I'll blow him up a little bit better there. Look at that. I owned this stone for a few years. Had to pass it along. I guess he still lives in Florida. This is the top sun piece of the same stone. And overall, I would say that stone was maybe about 10 inches from top to bottom, from side to side. And this will conclude my gallery of faces and heads. I'm calling this section of my gallery graphics, or gallery number three. And we're going to start out with this piece that is uh, in a local collection. And it's probably for sale. And it's about five inches uh, uh, wide here from edge to edge. And I don't really know what else to call this section. I'm going to blow up some of this right here so you can see it. Could this be some kind of animal? I'm not sure. 
This is the other side of it. Let's blow it up. And it just has it's a heavily worn tablet. I, I'm not sure what the rock composition is of this. It's been a couple of years since I've actually seen the rock. I don't think it is sandstone. This is another really small piece, probably about the size of a 50 cent um, coin. It's got some kind of design on it. That looks maybe a circle cross in the center there, or medicine wheel, whatever you want to call it. Here's the next graphic. I may have shown this in another uh, uh, gallery, but this is my picture of it. Next we have this one. I'm not sure what the purpose of it is. I That's why I call it graphics. Here we have a graphic design across, and it appears to have some, you know, four snakes in it. And the snakes are, are actually very similar. So how does an artist do that uh, on stone to make it look, I'm just saying. This is the reverse of it. Another graphic of some sort. Here's our next item. Just some kind of artwork. And a lot of times the impurities of the stone himself were utilized in the, uh, in the actual inscription. That could be uh, uh, the head of a bird with wings and his feet here or something. I don't know. This is the reverse of it. There's another design. no idea what that is. This is the reverse of the same stone. This fella here has been in uh, several different collections through the decades. I call this one the footpath. But I'm going to blow it up and let you look at it here. You tell me. Looks like it's got some kind of creature here with his head and a neck, but you can't really see that much of it. I call this one the Halloween rock because it appears to have a skeleton over here. I'll blow it up a little bit larger. This stone here has been around for decades several different collections. And here's the reverse of it, which I don't know what that is. have no idea. Here's another one that's been around for decades. As well as this one too. Uh, now, what this is supposed to mean, I don't know. I have no idea. It's got a little base here. What is that? Here's another locally owned stone. And, and I don't believe this is sandstone. I believe this is like a mudstone. This is a nice piece here. I believe this is still in a local collection. And it's all over the place. It's real busy. And this is a piece that I've uh, featured in um, a, another gallery, and it is a, uh, a, a red granite. Now, I'm not uh, totally convinced that this piece comes from, uh, uh, from the cave in Illinois, but it is in the, uh, someone's collection that that's all they collect. So I've, I've got to put it in there. It's not real big. It's about the size of, a, of an Ike. Here it is. Here's the other side of it. well polished that's that's my thing about it it's granite and it's polished and granite is very difficult to polish that's all i'm saying this is another picture from uh the mid 90s this was in the joe mahan collection down in i uh, in columbus georgia and it's kind of like a boat it's like a, a shoe shaped boat it has script on this side 
and has this script on the other side. And I don't have a picture of the top of it, but right up on, on the top here, it's about maybe three inches wide, and it has several streaks of pyrite flex uh, that are just totally uniform with, with the, the artifact. And there's just absolutely no way in the world that I could understand how that could form on this black Lavagna stone with the pyrite in it. But there are several that have pyrite flex in them. But to have a pyrite design in it was just absolutely incredible. I'm not so sure what this is. It's not a, an axe head. Let's look at the reverse. Could that be some kind of scraper? Here's another one. I call it spokes. Why would you drill these tiny little holes? How did they drill these tiny little holes in ancient times? In, in these in some of these artifacts I don't know what this is I, I show it in other galleries it's been around and here's another one heavily worn and that concludes this section called graphics this section of my gallery is titled Helios and this is the guy missing son of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra he's the one that brought all this stuff over here back in like 20 BC 25 BC to 20 BC and he is on several stones and these are the ones that now the insignia the Helios insignia can be written dozens of ways but once you see him in his facial uh, outline even though he's in different costumes you can make him out and that's what we have here this is the first one and most of these are, are the size just put in the palm of your hand and there's other other uh, uh, stones that describe him talk about him da 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 I didn't have the camera set right with this now you gotta remember that this was taken with an old Yashica uh, Kodak film uh, 100 long exposure with a wide open iris lots of light and he turned out green here but the, the stone is actually black when I began this endeavor I did not intend to have any decipherments in this series I uh, just uh, maybe a couple of times where I can tell you what it says or this or that and then uh, going through my Helios collection here uh, I took this picture back in 1994 down in Columbus, Georgia. This was part of the Joe Mahan Isaac collection. And you'll see Helios in a Numidian helmet. And I decided to go ahead and throw this decipherment in there because we don't have any video of this stone being deciphered anywhere. It's on our Facebook page, but that's it. That does not exist anywhere else. So I'm going to blow him up a little bit here so you can see the, the helmet there he's got. And now let's look at the reverse of this stone. Here we go. And you'll see the script goes starts here and here. And I'm going to blow it up for you as best I can. It is read this way, right to left. Both of these lines. And this language is, is so obscure. Uh, this, la this ancient language hasn't been around for millennia. And it's, it's very difficult to speak. It's very difficult to, to decipher. We're going to look at it. And you'll see a lot of repeating characters. Now we're going to see what this actually says in Numidian. And here's the actual script. And it's read from right to left. Like that. And here you see these symbols. Th these characters here. And wherever you see them, that's what they are. So now you see it this way. We'll come down and you see it this way. See? Boom here. And then you take it this way here. Okay? So, what we've got here is 
WSR, WBR, W, WRH, or variation, PR, variation H, here's a vari variation N, H, and H. Okay, now you see that there. And you'll see a lot of these characters double over. Here's two variations of an H, a G. Here's another one. And you have one, two, three, four with two lines, which is a W and an A sound, Y. In this ancient language, you didn't have to write down all the vowels. They, it was, everything was short. It didn't have any long vowels. But you'll notice that the O is everywhere an R. And there's four of them there. So it's like we're, we're, we're showing you that we don't make a letter one thing and then the next time you see it, it's something else, like a lot of our predecessors did years and years ago. So now we're going to see what it, what it says. And here it is. This is a W followed by a Wasser, Osiris, Wabra. Priest of Wa and Wach, great. Paruch, Pharaoh, Ach, just the same way as an Egyptian. Ach, living. Acha, sun god. Priest of Osiris and great Pharaoh, the living sun god. That's how we know this is Helios. Missing son of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. Here he is again, and this type has been around a while. Helios Rex. Helios King. And you'll see he looks like a middle-aged man. He's missing from history after about the age of 10, as near as we can figure. But this guy looks like he's in his 40s, at least. High 30s, 40s. Here's another one of him. He's got the caricature. But does have him in a beard. Others have him in a beard, shaven. Well executed stone. Here he is again. Here he is. And here's the reverse of that stone. Some of these have already been featured and very similar. This is my shot of my coin, my Helios coin, that I had for years until it burned up in a fire in 08. And You'll notice it was very similar to one of the others that, that Scott Walter had, and then a couple of other collectors had one or two. I've, I've seen like four or five of these. They're all very, very similar. And here's the reverse of it. My picture didn't turn out real good. I, like I say, I had antiquated cameras. And this is about the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit smaller. And some of these have already been featured but in different galleries or, or sections of galleries. But I'm going to put them all together here just for uh, uh, so that you get the idea. This, this is a pretty small coin, probably about the size of a quarter. Here's another one. This is about the size of a nickel. And these are all slugs. These are all replicas of the actual real gold artifacts. Let me be clear about that. Don't come over here to my place looking for real gold. Here's another one. It's about the size of a nickel. It's got Helios on it with a palm tree. Why would somebody 
a, a manufacture a fake a coin about the size of a quarter and put a palm tree on it and then bury it in Mary County, Illinois. There's another medallion. Helios with a water sign underneath the Helios. And again, this is Mark Anthony and Cleopatra's missing son from history. He vanishes off the planet and nobody knows what happened to him except us and I'm showing you what happened to him, where he, where he ended up. This one here is pretty big. It's about the size of an Ike. And here he is again. You see his name right there. This is another really, really nice tablet. My picture didn't show up really well on it. It's got a little bit of script here, but right here you see his name. And here he's in Egyptian garb. And he has an Egyptian beard. I guess when you're an ancient king in North America, you can look however you want. This is an old picture from a collection down in, uh, Joe Mahan's collection down in Columbus, Georgia. I took this picture in, uh, probably October of 1994. Here's an Egyptian replica of a gold, small gold brick. You see the eagle there. You see his name there. And Russ Burroughs asked me one time, he goes, and I said, man, uh, you know, I was talking about all the gold he found. Well, after we learned that he had found, like, just a, a ton of gold, and I said, this gold wasn't yours. He goes, well, who's, whose gold do you think it was? I said, well, whoever's name is stamped on the, on the gold brick, that's whose gold it was. <laughs> if, it's got, if it's got my name, Harry Hubbard, on it, that means it's my, my uh, 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 gold bar. Some of these pictures are more clear in my gold gallery. Here he is again. I apologize for these not being so clear, but hey, it was hard back then to get good shots. It's a black stone. I had a, a, a fluorescent light on the top, fluorescent light on the bottom to get rid of shadows. Here he is on a coin, or actually a medallion, it's large, probably about two and a half inches. And this isn't Helio, but it's a little mummy. You're clearly Egyptian, it's got the Helios right here. And you got your staff and rod. He's in the Helios section just because I didn't have another place to put him. And here's the boat showing how they got over here. Certainly not UFOs or flying saucers or anything like that. And this guy here, he's got his arms up. Helios is probably worshiping the sun there. And that piece is about the size of an Ike. It's pretty big. And this is a little marble uh, stamp that's got Helios on it. It's got a marble face on the other end. Here's another medallion, a three-tiered medallion. It's huge, about maybe three inches. And it clearly has an elephant right in the middle. It's got a snake coming down there, some other creatures perhaps. And this one here, to me, is the best rendition of Helios. And the story behind this stone here is uh, when... Uh, when Russ Burroughs was uh, infiltrating my camp, the first thing he did, what he did was, is he bought off my security supervisor. This guy I brought up, I'd known him since the early, uh, early 70s, and, and I brought him up to Illinois. He was my security supervisor. Uh, Russ Burroughs had contacted or gotten with him or, or one of the times when they got together, and, and I wasn't around, and Russ Burroughs gave him this and, and then uh, uh, my security supervisor was ratting on everything that we were doing. All the people I had coming, I wrote, wrote about it in, I think, book two. 
and and uh, he just went he was just a slimy bastard I mean the, the guy was a slimy bastard and and he was he was a uh, um, he would call Russ Burroughs and tell him everybody I'd been talking to. I mean, I didn't know how Russ Burroughs was figuring out all of my plans and, and, and what I was doing. And, and my visitors, the visitors I had coming in that I was putting up in my, in my, in my uh, rental house, I didn't know. And, and, it, and it was Wayne May that, that uh, first shed the light on it. He goes, Harry, Russ Burroughs knew everything. It's like somebody else was, uh, was on the phone listening to me and you talk. Well, the only other person was my security supervisor. But this stone right here converted him into being a spy, a mole in my camp. It is a beauty. I didn't really know that I had a picture of it until I, I started doing this video and I found, I found this picture. Unbelievable. The detail on this is unbelievable. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Really handsome guy. Missing son of Mark Anthony and Cleotra. And that will conclude this section. Look at all our neighbors. After reviewing some of uh, what I've already done, I decided to throw this section in for Julius Caesar. And and uh, uh, people were saying, well, how, how, why is he in the U.S.? Because he spent like a year and a half. Him and Cleopatra were were stranded, if you can imagine, stranded in, down in the lower Nile. And uh, they had to get away from uh, the, the opposing Egyptian forces. And because there was a lot of turmoil and, and a lot of back and forth going on between Cleopatra and her brothers and the general, the general of the Egyptian army at that time. And this is me after I cleaned up the the tablet. And, and it had mud on it, so well, why did you clean it? Because I already had pictures of it that were clean. And it had patina, heavy patina right here, and that patina would not bleach out. I tried to scrape, I tried to get that out of there. I mean, forensic lab, I mean, Frank Aon just, he scolded me royally for that. And, and, I, and I understand why, I understand why, but already, it was, it was already tainted. It was already cleaned. But this is beautiful Carrera marble, and it is fluorescent and phosphorescent, long wave and short wave, which is extremely peculiar. That is an identifying factor. When you can put these... These, uh, that's why I cleaned it up so I could put my lights on it and really get the characteristics out on it. So, given all that, uh, these are identifiers. And these, these silver inclusions were all through it. See right here, right here, these, these telltale. Marble is a thumbprint. All marble can be traced back to its origin. All marble, anywhere across the world. All marble can be traced. Here he is again. Same stone. See the cut here. This is all the dirt that I that I washed out of him. And I believe Russ Burroughs took this picture. So this is not my picture. But I'm putting it in this this because it's in my gallery. And here you see it's about nine inches. I said what ten inches, nine inches of by nine inches or so. And here it is clean. And you notice that the, the, the brake mark is not there. Okay, now, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to show you, after it was broken, you see all this dirt and filth in here? Well, that's why I cleaned it, because I had a picture of it that it had already been cleaned. Same patina. Same stone. And that's why I explained to uh, Frank at the, at the lab that that's why I cleaned it, because it had already been cleaned. And then, evidently, Burroughs put it down in a vat of water and stirred up some silt or something and let it sit down in there and, and uh, try to fool people. But it had already, it was broken already. And this picture here was taken by Virginia Harrigan in 1987. So now you know all about this particular stone. This right here, you can see how clean it is. And we're going to look at, uh, uh, at this fellow's uh, uh, gallery later. 
Uh, this is done by Warren Dexter. And this was was uh, this picture was taken in early summer of 1987, as near as I can figure. This is the first gallery that was ever taken of these stones, and it was taken before Virginia Horrigan. So she took her her pictures in late summer of 1987, and Warren Dexter took his in early summer of 1987. But you can see the stone has been cleaned. It is pretty clean. So that's why I went ahead and cleaned it up again. This picture was sent to me when I was still living in Florida from a fan of ours who had been following our, our, our stuff. I wish I could get back with the guy. I wish this guy would contact me again. And he had deciphered it as Gaius. Right there. Boom. He figured out this was Octavian, Augustus Caesar. And it shows. He figured it out. And here you see Julius. Boom. There's a picture. There's a bust of Julius. See the similarities are just unbelievable. And here's the Eula Hysar in the Uraeus after it has been broken. We'll see pictures later on where it wasn't broken. Eola Hysar. And you'll notice the three stars here. That's Julius Caesar. And after he was dead, after he died, uh, they deified him because there were many portents in the skies upon his death. And when um, when Octavian went to the uh, the apartment of Queen of Queens Cleopatra the Seventh, Cleopatra, it says in uh, Cassius Dio that she adored herself with all of her portraits of Julius Caesar. I believe this marble, this Carrera marble stone here, this tablet, was in the court of Cleopatra the Seventh when Octavian visited her there before she killed herself. I believe that was there. Why not? It's a beautiful carving, Carrera marble, Yola Hysar, his name in Numidia, uh, in, in North Libyan, and and uh, I'm I'm sure that that I I owned this stone for years and sold it. But I'm sure that that stone there was touched and held by Cleopatra the Seventh. Really nice piece. And you can see over here where it's got notches. It was part of a wall mural. And that's going to conclude my my uh, insertion concerning Julius Caesar, as he is depicted in this tomb.